This is a study comparing the predictive value of global longitudinal strain and ejection fraction. In patients which have a reduced ejection fraction below 35% and, and global strain uh, more than 12%, or in patients with ejection fraction above 35% or a global strain below minus 12%. And as you can see, these uh, four groups uh, go together. So it's not very impressive, but when you do a detailed analysis of the cohort, then you see something very interesting. If you look at patients with an ejection fraction above 35%, then adding global longitudinal strain gives you an, predictive, an added predictive value. And this is probably because it's very difficult to recognize subtle changes of the left ventricular function by just measuring ejection fraction. But if you do a global longitudinal strain measurement, then this is much clearer because it's a more robust and a more reliable measurement. We have also looked into global longitudinal strain in a huge population-based study with uh, almost 800 participants. Is the Flamengo study, which is organized uh, by our department in Leuven. And in these participants, global longitudinal strain was measured and the patients were followed up over almost eight years. And as you can see here, the risk for cardiovascular, cardiac and coronary events increases with decreasing strain. And if you calculate the relative risk, then you see that the normal risk around one here is exactly where we usually say that this is the normal strain value. So between 19 and 20%. And if the strain goes below that, then the relative risk of these patients is higher. So this is a very impressive study. As a matter of fact, eight years follow-up is very mm -hmm. long. And a lot of patients and finally hard endpoints. Uh, of course, this is not a study that was uh, performed only in coronary artery disease patients. But when you take these results, how would that change your daily clinical practice? I think ejection fraction is still the standard parameter to use. So we, we always measure ejection fraction in all patients. But we have started uh, since um, several years now to always do also the global longitudinal strain in all the patients because we realize that it shows us subtle changes. If we see it not yet with ejection fraction, we already get a warning from the global longitudinal strain measurements. And of course, if you follow up patients, you can see how they deteriorate. That's an extremely sensitive and since it is so robust and reproducible, also a very uh, robust way of following a patient. Yes.